Have you ever wanted to know what it takes to create your first video game? Well sit tight, because I'm about to drop a major knowledge deuce. The first step in creating a video game is to come up with a design. And the first step in designing your first game is to make sure that your first game is Pong. One of the most important parts of design is creating some concept art. It provides a way to visualize the end result without actually doing anything. It also allows you to set an impossible visual style that will serve as a harsh reminder of how easy it is to paint a pretty picture and how difficult it is to make a game. If you're one of the lucky few who is so blessed with creativity that you're able to think up original games in your head by taking existing games and applying arbitrary math operations, you should just stop right here. You've reached a nirvana known as being the idea guy, where your thoughts are so important that the very act of thinking them can be compared to doing actual work. All you need to do is find a group of people dumb enough to do the real work and start calling yourself a game designer. If instead you are capable of not just thinking of things, but also doing something useful, the next step in creating a game is crafting a visual aesthetic to captivate your audience. Sadly, every game requires artwork of some sort. Depending on your background, this is either the easiest part of game development or the worst part of game development. If you fall into the latter group, you might want to look into something known as pixel art. In order to create pixel art, you start by crapping out some half-assed programmer art using whatever image program that came with your computer. Then, you want to take what you created and start calling it pixel art. Remember, there's an exponential relationship between the number of pixels you had to draw and the amount of time your game will take to finish. And you don't want to spend your whole life making some shitty pixel art game, so minimize those pixels. Let your audience do the work. Their imagination will do the heavy lifting, and your pixel blobs will do the spotting. With the art out of the way, you now need to move on to gameplay. At the core of every game is the beating heart of logic that is driven by beautifully crafted hierarchies of decision trees and data structures. For the sake of argument, let's say I'm not what you would call a competent programmer. Let's say instead I have only a vague understanding of the underlying constructs that will be required to make my game a reality. If you're like me, then you're going to want to avoid programming as much as possible. So you should definitely take advantage of one of the many game engines available to you. If possible, I would like to avoid typing altogether, and that's why I chose Unreal Engine. With this engine, I can avoid typing strange words in the virtual paper like some sort of primitive scribe, and instead draw my game logic using visual building blocks like an illiterate toddler with a box of Legos. To make my life even easier, the engine provides a number of example projects which I can build off of, so I can feel like I've made a lot of progress without actually doing anything. Once I've managed to get an example running in the engine, it's just a matter of time until my game is complete. And since I'm basically an indie game developer now, my time is worth something. And that something is about a hundred thousand bucks. A few good games, and all the bad ones, take advantage of the power of crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is a method used by companies who lack the financial know-how required to actually stay in business. The burden of building capital is instead passed on to the target audience, in exchange for a t-shirt. One of the most popular crowdfunding platforms is Kickstarter. Kickstarter offers to host your project on their site for just 5% of the money you earned. While 5% may sound like a lot, it's important to keep in mind what value Kickstarter is providing you. For instance, hosting your project page on the website for a month has to be at least 8 bucks. And they process the payments for you. But that comes out of the other 5% that Amazon takes. If you don't think about it too hard, Kickstarter is the best choice because loads of people, and more importantly, game developers use it, even if they don't really need crowdfunding in the first place. Okay, so now you just need to create a Kickstarter page. Since Kickstarter is so saturated with game projects, it's important that you make your project stand out as much as possible from the competition. Some of the most successful Kickstarter projects have a well-defined budget, a clear roadmap, and reasonable deadlines. <laughs> just kidding. All you need for good Kickstarter is a pie chart, a video concept art moving around, and a deadline you couldn't possibly meet. Perhaps the most important thing to consider when developing your Kickstarter project is the reward tiers. In video game Kickstarters, there are three basic tier levels. The Pity Backer, the Early Access, and the Idiot. The Pity Backer is for the people who don't really give a shit about your game, but still want to pat you on the back for trying. It's the Kickstarter equivalent of giving your spare change to the street musician. You like what he's doing, but you don't want him to think that he's good enough to make a career of it. They're the access tiers for all the impatient backers in your target audience. These people want to play your game before it's even done. It's sort of like getting a sneak peek at a movie. 
or like having your dinner delivered at a restaurant before it's fully cooked. You get the satisfaction of eating your dinner in front of your family while they fight over the free bread. Then, when they're finally enjoying their meal, you'll be kneeling over the toilet barfing up raw chicken. The idiot here, publicly referred to as enthusiast, is with the one guy who has so much money at his disposal that his ability to discern value is non-existent. This reward is basically a $10,000 plane ticket to fly your honored backer to your city for a tour of your development studio, apartment. With the reward tiers established, you're ready to publish your Kickstarter and wait for the money to roll in. Remember, do not work on the game until the Kickstarter is over. Otherwise, you're working for free, and you're not a charity. But feel free to use this time to draft your The Game Has Been Delayed email.